expecting an absolute cracker here. And we're about to get underway. The red, yellow and black change strip of Salford. They kick off high. Rovers' first use of the ball. And it's gathered and brought forward. And the first tackle made inside the 20. And a quick introduction to Tangi Zenon. The Catalan Dragons, Loney. The Salford looking to put the pressure on. What a start here. Great offload, though, wasn't it? Real late offload, and Minchella makes a, another 10 metres off the back of it. Aggressive. I think, we'll, I think we'll see at the start of this game what the plan is from both sides. It looks like uh, Hulk and are going to test the middle of, of Salford, but I imagine when Salford do get the ball, they'll be spinning it around and offloading like we've just seen there. Yeah, well, here are Rovers. Parcel gets it to Lynette. What an edge that is, Lynette, Kenny Dowell and Ryan Hall, three veterans were still at the top of their game, and here is Sean Kenny Dowell, his final tilt at Challenge Cup Glory will be retiring at the end of the season, last one, they've made it to halfway, what can they do at the end of the set? They're going to go high, Rome Milnes will put it up high, it's a tester in the corner for Ken Seo, gets it, but it's a decent first set. Yeah, really good first set, wasn't it? Really, really good first set, really good kick from Milnes at the end of it, and, and Lewis follows that up with a great tackle. Yeah, they'll be delighted with that. This is exactly what they need to put Salford in areas that they can't play. We can see they're still going to try and move the ball. Well, here they are moving it now, trying to get it out wide. Good tackle there. Milnes did well. That was a must-make tackle on the Salford 30. They're coming down the short side here, looking to test the skill. They get it away, racing down the touchline. Ball back on the inside. Tackle made, and Sneed loses it, going to ground. Well, we see in the first set, Salford already looking to attack. Yeah, looking to attack, and, and that's all, almost a warning sign there, a warning shot for Ulkayar. They are going to move the ball. Even if they're pinned in the corner, they have to expect, Willie Peters said it before the game, that they expect it on the long side, expect it on the short side. They got caught there, but it was great scramble defence. So Rovers get it back. Centre field. Here's Ryan Hall, carries strong, the short of the halfway line. And now Litton escapes out of dummy half. He thinks he's got markers not squared. It is a set restart. So more tackles here for Rovers, who start 40 away then. They'll take it up the middle. Good tackle made there. 35 away. King, the man that goes to ground. Litton dummies right, goes left. Milnes. Gets it away to Lewis, ball back on the angle for Kenny Dahl, trying to sidestep his way through. 25 out Rovers, one-handed pickup, little dummy, and still going, and then a big shot goes in there. On Lewis, who will play at centre field, 20 out. Litton, again, jumping out, busy, gets it away to Lynette. Lynette offloads it back to Litton. Litton now escapes one. Can he find a pass? He forced it, it was forward, it was never on. It was never on, and a couple of times now we've seen, you know, a little bit over-ambitious skill from both sides, and that's probably because of the, the prize at the end of this game. He's forcing that pass, the excitement, and it was good play by Litton, and luckily, and then the forward pass ultimately brought the play down. Started the game well, Litton, hasn't he? He's jumped out a couple of times, been lively. We've got the set restart on, on Callum Watkins, not square at marker. He's, he's proven to be a bit of danger, isn't he, for Salford? Yeah, he's already getting his eyes up, isn't he? Here comes Salford then, bringing the ball off their own 10-metre line. Don't forget, we're back tomorrow. More Challenge Cup action. York take on Lee. We're live at the LNER tomorrow afternoon for that one. The shape on the ball is just magnificent from Salford, even when they do a drive like this from Lafayette, they've got support. Well, that pass was on, and Vuni Yaya well, should have taken that in, possibly, there. He's not happy with himself, the King. I'll say this, Mark, and we often say it when we commentate on games, the start of games is really important, and Salford have made two errors now, haven't they, with, with, with the ball in hand. I know it's a forced one from the full-back of OKR scrambling, but... In big games, Kev, you can't afford to start like this. You can't, because there's two things. It'll spook your attack, first and foremost. They might tighten up, and, and that won't suit their style. But also, you're giving an opportunity to a very good attacking side as well. Scrum then inside the 40. They're looking to load numbers up. Again, that pass wasn't the uh, cleanest. It was close to being, wasn't it? It the was. referee could have called it. He could have. You heard the anxiety sigh off the, the old faithful team. Ball now here. With Hadley trying to wrestle his way inside the 30 metre line. Litton again at dummy half. Looks now, gets the ball away to Minchella. Minchella 
offloads it to King. Tackle made 20 away. And again, Dummies right, gets it to Lewis. Lewis with a pass, they get it away. Big chance here for Ryan Hall in the corner. He's over. Ryan Hall will score in the corner. And Rovers make Salford pay. Or do they? Referee wants to check it, but it looked pretty good to us. Let's hear from the video referee. OK, it's tackle three. Live decision is a try. We're just looking at the grounding, please, to confirm Hall does ground the ball. So he's in possession at this point. Still in possession. If we go to show slow on this, please, just confirm he does maintain possession and stop on the point the ball is grounded. So it's in his hand there and grounded. Thank you. I made my decision. So Ben Thaler was pretty confident. Brian Hall was very confident. And so he should. And the first try of the game is going to go the way of the home side. Hull Kingston Rovers hit the front. Well, you called it Paul Cook. You keep turning the ball over. You're going to give Rovers chances, and they've made Salford pay. 4 0. And he's prolific, isn't he? You know, we spoke about him you know, down, downstairs, you know, pre, pre show, and he's prolific, Ryan Hall. He, he very rarely misses any opportunity. Left winger scoring, it's a little bit by accident, isn't it? That I, can. I think that's actually knocked out of Mikey Lewis's hand. I think he's actually missed his assignment there, but it's landed perfect. And there's certain people in the world of rugby who get a chance yeah. to score. Ryan Hall's one of them. When I saw him break through then and there were cover coming over, I didn't for one minute think he wasn't going to get that ball down. And this is where you know the opportunities created by themselves on Salford. It might just tighten them up and make them play a little bit more of a constricted game. Well, well they're going to have to, Kev, because if they keep turning the football over, as you said, you're inviting a really good attacking team in Hulk KR in, and Ryan Hall doesn't need a second opportunity to score tries. Ron Milnes with a tough assignment first up. We'll look up at the post right over on that far side. We'll hear the roar from the Rovers fans if this is any good. There's the roar. There are the flags. Six points to nil. Rovers lead. Early on here, Ryan Hall with yet another try of an illustrious career. And as Kevin said, once he gets in this position, there's only one outcome. Yeah, there's only one outcome. And just that hand there by Callum Watkins to knock the ball out of Mikey Lewis's hands has just felt perfect. And sometimes, you know, you get a little bit of luck, but you've got to take your chances, and that's what all KR have done. And it's a great start. We said they needed to start well. Well, they started fantastically well. well what, Paul, Paul Rowley, if he, if he had a plan pre-game, it certainly wasn't this, was it? He's got the crowd now involved in this game, turned the ball over a couple of times, full car 6-0 in front, and everything's all on for them now. It is, good defence there on Zeno. What I would say, when these two met at the Magic Weekend a couple of weeks ago, Salford did waste a lot of early chances, but eventually did run out on top, so they certainly won't be panicking yet. But it is a very, I don't know, there's an error here, and yeah, Hadley's right. coughed it up, so they've hit the lead, but now they're inviting Salford in. Yeah, you don't want to invite them, and I, I don't think they know a different way. I don't think they can tighten up. I don't, I don't think they've got a game plan where it's boring and it's a grind. I think, you know, they'll back themselves to get the skill right at some point, and it may work very well be off this scrum play. And this is an opportunity, Sneed will feed the scrum 25 meters out six points to nil and they're coming to Lafay on this near side Lafay will carry we know he's got an offload in him but this time he'll take the tackle 15 away Burgess waits at dummy half we'll play it now gets it into Sneed Sneed goes to Uniyawa he's tackled 15 away just to the left of sender there Coming down the short side with Sneed here, he'll get the ball now, big step from Sneed, and again, can he find an offload? Yo, he does, makes a loose one, and Rovers pick it up with Minchella, and Mark Sneed, such an experienced campaigner, well, he's getting the rounds of the kitchen off the Rovers fans, a former black and white, and now a penalty for Rovers. Yeah, Tom Opacek picks up from dummy half, and I think it's the, the Salford defender from Marker, puts a shot on him late, and... Again, Salford, Salford are in good field position there and 10, the football over. Yeah, that Luke was play, play two, that as well, yeah, Paul, so Luke. they didn't even have any punches. KR first to, to the loose ball. Some good signs for the home team, certainly. And them loose balls and attacking, attacking quality now, again. I say a nervy start from Salford, but a loose start, I think, would be fair to say. They've come up with a lot of errors early on here. 
Sending off loads it, and there's a bus straight up the middle. Clean missed tackle. Here's George King. He fancies going the distance. George yeah, King. He might get there. Tackled two meters away. The Salford line busted. Surely a quick play of the ball. They go left. Salford have got back. Can they get to Lewis? That's a great tackle. That is a fantastic defensive effort there. But a quick play of the ball here. Kenny Dowell slips. He looks to offload it. He's tackled ten away. Oh, oh, what a big tackle. bust up the middle. Oh, it's poor though, isn't it, from Salford? That's just off a tap, isn't it? It is here Straight now. Straight through the middle. They go again. Rovers looking to double their advantage here. They're eight metres away. Lytton looks, sees Minchella, gets Minchella. He now goes to Mills, out the back to Zenon. Zenon gets it away, but Opacic couldn't take it in. That was a try. Referee said it went backwards. That's a huge call from Ben Thaler. That means Rovers will get another tilt at the line and they're going to go high, floating kick, Lynette arriving, Lynette catches it, can he get the offload away? No, and it's punted away, it was not forward on that occasion, but Rovers opened them up there. Well, you've got to give Callum Watkins and Dion Cross some credit for try-saving tackles, but completely agree with Paul, that was, that was shocking to say the least by the defence, up the middle of the field, and I don't think it'll be long into this game before Paul Rowley starts to make some changes. Because we spoke about how good Salford are attacking wise, but at the minute it's all okay, Kayaru look the most threatening. Salford surviving. I guess we've got it. Whilst we criticise the the effort on the one-on-one -on -one tackle, the scramble was pretty good there. Yeah, wasn't it was. They got back in numbers, and I think it's Dion Cross who makes the, the tackle on Lewis on the on the play after it as well. It's a must-make tackle because if he gets away there, Lewis, it's certainly going to be another try for Hall outside of him. So 6-0 at the moment. First of a double header from the Challenge Cup on via play sports, of course. Tomorrow at the LNER, York, Championship York against the Lee Leopards. Last one for Sneed will go high. It's a floaty kick. Zenon underneath it catches it well. Looks to get going again. I think he's made a really positive start, yeah, hasn't he? He has, hasn't he? Caught the first kick off and took the first carry in the game. He scrambled uh, and brought down and, and Taken away a try scoring opportunity. He's inches away from the, yeah. the assist up this corner, so no, he's a confident player and, and he's is. definitely contributing to this KR side. And Rovers are starting to get some offloads away now here. Hall trying to barrel his way, he's lost it. That it's will be a knock on on this occasion. And it's Salford's turn to react. It's been a little bit scrappy in patches, hasn't it, so far? Yeah, that was unforced. He wasn't trying to play, it was a, it was a knockdown, I think, by Mark Sneed. We see him bumped off and then he gets his hand back. That's just a drop ball, but whichever team can settle into the groove the first. Both teams have made some errors. I think Hulk KR have definitely started the brightest, but whichever side can put some consistent pressure on, could actually put a few points, a few scores, not just one or two, a few scores on the opposition. The crowd in for this one. It's a scrappy start, isn't it, to, to, to what is a knockout game, a big game. It is. Nice footwork there from Croft over the halfway line. To settle down a little bit here, the visitors, Dupree carries, he's wrapped up, 40 away. Now moves centre field, here is Sneed, out the back he goes to Briley, Briley in the left by, gets it away, Burgess fancies a run down the touchline, realises he's got to cut back in, great footwork from Burgess, still going Burgess, up to the 10, brought down nine away, Rovers backtracking here, the Stone will get the ball away to Sneed. Sneed skips across a couple, finds Croft. Croft fires it out wide, not the best pass, and then it's knocked on. And it's another error. I can't remember what we in this game, way into the uh, what 15 minute mark. And Salford, I don't think you've completed the set yet. I think they've kicked one ball, uh, and that was from their own half. So I think one set maybe they've completed. But what you've got to say is when they when they are getting it right, they're splitting this right edge of Ulke are pretty easy. And they won't stop doing it, Mark. They, they will not stop testing themselves and testing their opposition and moving the ball. There is no other way that Salford can play it, but at some point their execution has to be better. He does. 6 0 it is at the moment. Ryan Hall's try. The difference. And Rovers do here as they look to clear out their own end of the field. Senior will carry it. Big 25 out. Well, now down the short side. That was a swing, that will be a high shot there. And that was unnecessary, wasn't it? Well, I think he's at risk again. Brought off by the coach pretty soon. He's made a couple of errors. He's arguing with the referee now. 
the ball he dropped, wasn't it, from Lafay. It's, it's a stone cold drop. He's not started the game in the most positive way. No frustration for Puni Yawa. Now the ball tapped by Opacek, gets it away. Zenon to Minchella to Litton. Now they're going through the hands. They get it to Kenny Dahl. Kenny Dahl straightens things up. 35 out, first tackle for Rovers. Back where they want to be, down the Salford end. Lynette will carry. That was at risk of being a high shot as well, but referee says that one will do. Told to get to his feet, Lynette, as Minchella now plays it here to Mill. Short pass, oh, what a shot, shot there on Hadley. Hit tackle, wasn't it? Wow, big hit goes in there. Zenon at dummy half, gets it away. King takes it stood still, so that gives Salford the chance to... Is that hit again? Sneed it was with the contact. 17 away, Rovers going left again. That's where they feel their threat is. Lewis again, they race out of the line. This time they don't get to Lewis. Lewis then will put the burners on. Thinks about the kick through, looking for Zenon. Didn't get there. Great covering defence. That was fantastic work. Yeah, yeah, before the game, we mentioned that the balance of the side will change with Zenon coming in. But the, the combination of Zenon and Mikey Lewis at the minute is showing real good signs. Unfortunately, they give a penalty away. And this will give Salford another chance, but it feels like Salford are hanging on here. They just need to get through the set and build some pressure. The fans not happy with that high shot. It was Great a kick cover by touch. Sneed, wasn't it? Really good cover. Got his body in, in the way of the fullback. Yeah, it looked like Zenon was going to go in there. I'm sure, there was a lot in that one, to be honest, but. Ball up to the 30-metre line, still 6-0 the lead here. Salford just trying to work their way forward. Towards the 40-metre line, Huntington will play it. And now it's Croft, gets it away. Watkins looking to get to an edge, but Rovers are all over him. Right short of the halfway line. Croft gets it in field. Tackle made there. Want a quick play of the ball, and they get a quick play of the ball. Here now is Sneed. Short pass. And inside the 40 they go. Last one. Kin in at dummy half. Former Rovers man gets it away to Sneed. Sneed's coming back down this side. Is this going to go in the field of play? It's batted back. Lafay will catch it. Lafay will get it away. They're looking for a pass. They'll keep it alive. But blindsided there, the Salford man. And Atkin is clattered. And the nothing, temperature's right. Really I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely not. He's there to be smashed, isn't he? I'm yeah. not sure why Stone's taken offence to that. Well, it's Ollie Partington. Partington. He's nothing he, wrong he, with that, Kev, is he? He's giving the hospital ball. And then I think he's saying sorry by pulling. Dean Adley off, but that was a great tackle and good scramble. Matkin just getting some running repairs. Dean Hadley having words and Tyler Dupree just getting himself acquainted there. Well, a little bit unnecessary, I think. That well, it's, it's unnecessary. It's, it's, it's still come about from what is a, a perfectly legal tackle on a bloke who's just been blindsided. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't need you getting being reviewed, mate, and there's no words in. Right, same with you. We need to chill. Listen to it. No, 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 no. Am I talking? Right then. Let's think what we're doing. Prepare to be it. Get out of it. Play the ball there. Think. It's not the ball. Being reviewed. Oliver, no, this is just going to be a player. Being reviewed, ball. there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Well, good luck carrying this first ball because they're, they're going to come from everywhere. Well, let's find out. Here they go. It's Senior who will carry it, and he does well at 35 off his own line. It's a cup game. Temperatures are going to fray. Tempers are going to be pushed to the limit. There's a ball now, centre field. There it goes, luckily, former Salford man. Carries over halfway. Rest start for him. Luckily, just his second of the season. Now, Minchella, such a key player for Hulkinson Rovers, flicks it away. Luckily, juggles and catches, and he bumps off one. Got rid of Dupree, didn't he? He did. Tackle made. Just outside the 30. Litton gets it away to King. They were on him quickly. Last one, says Ben Thaler. Centre field, they're going left. Milnes is going to hoist it high. CL waits. Gets off the ground, did well to catch it. 
Did well, very well. So Salford have it back. It's been scratchy from Salford. I think in many ways, Kevin, they'll be pleased they're only 6-0 down. Yeah, and I'm just looking at some of the big boys, Big King and Tyler Dupree, just struggling to get back in the line, and now they do lose that shape, Mark. So I think the fact that they have spilled so much ball has just taken an effect on their energy. 20 off their own line. Here's Lafay. Lafay runs it in. Litton claps the ball. They know all about the Lafay offload. Now Atkin will get it away. Croft turns it back inside. Here's Dupree trying to get rid of Litton. They're only up to the 40 meter line. Can they find a decent kick to end the set? Sneed will kick. He's wrong footed Zen on there, but he'll get back and collect it on his 10. He now will look to bring it back. The chase is a good one, and they'll get him on the 20 meter line. Yeah, it's a good set from Salford, isn't it? They're, they're under real pressure. I agree with Kevin. Spilt that much ball, they're losing shape in their attack now, and they're just trying to get to the end of some set. Actually, looked a little bit more productive though, going through the middle yep. and using them big bodies, testing out OKR's pack for once. Yeah, the one from Kenny Dahl here now is Lewis. Lewis wrapped up center field on halfway. Litton looking short will kick over the top. Briley will smart. skip across. He's going to have to deal with this, Briley, right on his line. He'll pick it up. Is he thinking about the pass? No, he can't. So Lynn's kick was clever, well weighted. Oh, they've jumped there. Both the markers went the same way, and that's an easy out for Salford. The kicking game has been so much better for Ulke than, than Salford at the minute, Cookie. Massive, massive area that they need to improve. Salford. Yeah, absolutely. Milnes has been really good, and that was Litton, wasn't it? Just jumping out down the short side, puts Briley under real pressure. Here's Snee, gets it to Briley. Now they've got a chance. Lafay, if he'd have got the pass away, he does That's get the done. pass away. Burgess going down the touchline, tackled by Senior. But again, they're coming to this left-hand side, Salford. Here's Sidlow into the action, gets a nice pass away. Up the middle, Partington flicks it back. Sidlow gets it back. He's going to have a run. Tackled inside the 40 then. And they get a kick here. Oh, Sneed is deep. They're going to go to Brodie Croft instead. He goes high. Ryan Briley's going to give chase. Zenon's going to have some competition for this. Ball dropped, but they're offside. That's becoming a problem now as well. It's not just the sloppiness with the ball. It's a sloppiness when they get in decent positions, they're letting them out far too easy. It's a tough call, I thought Ryan really was onside there. Maybe it might have been Partington, I think, that was inside the yeah. 10. As sloppy as they've been, though, they still look very dangerous when they do get something going on this left edge yeah. for, for Salford, they look very likely to break them every time. And that's the point I made about the game at the Magic Weekend. They did that a lot first half, didn't get it right too many times, but they kept them, like you mentioned, they're going to keep going. They're going to keep backing their skill, and that's the worry that Hawkinson Rovers have got. Well, it is only six points to nil. It's a narrow lead, but they're in front in knockout football. The tackle made there. Here now, short pass. Sneed all over Hadley there. A couple of good tackles in Mark Sneed so far. And now he's Mills. Little pack of Kennedy, isn't it? Pass. Reese Kennedy, isn't it? Yeah. He's good to the ground, 40 away. But we'll get it away to Lewis. Lewis gets it to Kenny Dow. Kenny Dow bumping players off. Short pass. Nice pass to Zenon. Zenon tries to get it away. Here's Opacek. Players flying through the middle. Tanny Zenon! Try for Hawkinson Rovers. Great play up the middle from the Robins, and they have their second try. Zenon involved a couple of times, and he has the finishing touch. Rovers lead by 10 points today. It was a little bit static the play before. I thought Reese Kennedy's play, Mills static to, to, to Kennedy, and then from there, Lewis just drifts across the field, brings back Kenny Dowell. Kenny Dowell floats back across the field and finds Zenon. Zenon finds Opacek. Little one two, wasn't it, Kevin? It's a sensational try, and nothing less than they deserve, really. I think Salford have been really poor, uh, and they're architects of their own downfall, but looking to Rome's have got to take their opportunities and are doing. Yeah, and I think that young man on camera now, Tangi Zenon, I think he started this game fantastically well. And he's contributing to a, a lead that should look like 12 points after the kick by Milnes. And, and that's probably what they need to keep doing. If Salford are going to keep attacking, well, they need to punish them when the, their execution is off. And they could run away with this game. I think the, the worry for Paul Rowley will not be... He'll be disappointed they've dropped a lot of the ball, but he'll be disappointed defensively. They've been 
up the middle have been opened up two or three times yeah, already. Absolutely, the one where George King goes through is a shocker, as Kev said. And you know, the, uh, I just think that uh, it's not just them making errors, Mark. It, they're, they're giving penalties away off the back of it and getting a little bit aggrieved of something that's you know not illegal in the game. And they'd, they'd be better, they'd be better just just keeping themselves and getting their own backyard in order. And, and what? And this is a dangerous time now for OK because when Salford do go behind. They almost go into a frenzy. Fantastic try, though. Taking his chance so well. You know, he's had a couple of touches so far in the opposition where he's nearly created a try, and he's just got on the scoreboard himself. Great debut. Yeah, really strong start. A big Rovers contingent here enjoying their early lunchtime Challenge Cup action. As Lewis would collect the kickoff. Here's Kennedy then. We'll run it in. He's met 12 off the line. Salford just need to do the, the basics better at the moment. Luckily, up to Lafay. Laf oh, offload Great off the offload. ground, what a catch it was from Hadley. Opacek will go forward, he's going up to the 30, he's still going. Snake drags him down, what an offload that was though. Quick play of the ball and now a penalty. And Rovers are starting to earn their penalties here. What about this for an offload, though? It's sensational, isn't it? It's almost on the ground, isn't it? What an offload, what a catch from Hadley as well. They really well, are. More missed tackles, more offloads, more penalties. So when you pull Pierre can score again and capitalise on this dominance that they've hit, this purple patch, then well, they could really blow this game wide open. They certainly could. And Chilla thought he had to take the tackle there. They're 40 away. Can they get a third try here? 24 gone here at the Soul Group Craven Park. Kennedy up the middle. Rovers not been to the final since 2015 when they were thrashed by Leeds. Is this going to be their year despite being down on troops? They are in control at the moment of this quarter-final. Ball out wide, Opacic's pass wasn't good, and that's a knock-on, his skill just letting down there, Opacic. And that is going to be Salford Ball. Great read by Joe Burgess to come off his wing, and he needed to because that was another chance. The quick hands when we get senior away, but fantastic defence there. We mentioned the defence had to be better, and it was on that occasion. Well, look, they're looking a bit of pain, Salford. You know, looking, you know, hands on knees. The the, the big fellas in the middle. They've had to do so much defending. I think, that's a, I think that's the thing, we mentioned it right from the off, they're going to back their skill, are they going to make errors in doing that, but you've got to be prepared to defend it, they haven't been able to do that, they're making a double change here as well as uh, Dupree and Partington leave the field, so Ormanroyd into the action, this is Ben Helliwell, so a couple of changes for Paul Rowley. Yeah, probably a little bit more mobile in the middle of the field, I don't think he'll be happy with it with the start of his, his pack, Paul Rowley, so far. So it's up to these guys to pick it up and get the Salford Reds back into this game. Not, they've not, they've not created any pressure, have the Salford? They've, they've not been down that end of the field at all. Well, they've not completed enough sets, have they? Well, just over halfway. Sneed under a little bit of pressure, skips away, then we'll put it high, then we'll backtrack into his own 10, we'll catch it nicely. Big wall of red. Amber and Black in front of him, tackle made. They wanted it, didn't they? they want a rush tackle, rush rush tackle there, didn't they? Mills was not happy as Hall will carry. He's tackled. You hear the Rovers fans in the background. One handed pick yeah, up from penalty. Lewis and another penalty. How many times have we seen that now? When they do get it right with the ball, they just can't contain the pack and the edges. It's Ryan Hall who wins the penalty this time, and rightfully wins the floor, and they just pull him down. and. Ben Bailey gives a penalty, and this crowd is definitely becoming a factor now because they're booing and cheering for everything, and subconsciously it's got to make an effect on the referee. Salford came into it on the back of four straight wins and have been in really good form, but they're a shadow of that side at the moment. And fair play to Hulkingston Rovers, they lead by 12 and deservedly so as well as Kenny Dowell skips up to halfway. He'll play it now. Even there off the top penalty, Kenny Dahl beats the first defender, doesn't he? And it's all too easy at the minute, for OK. It's a nice run up the middle. Storton on from the bell, he's got that wrong. Got away with that one. That's that was fortunate, Mills will take it in. 
He won the two decisions. Paul Rowley mentioned that Rovers do have home advantage. Minchella, short pass, nice footwork from Stone. Oh, he couldn't get the pass away, Lewis was waiting. Well, that was a try if he does, Mark. It was, 15 away. Denied them, but for how long? Going down the short side, Lewis had to reach to catch it. Tackle not yet made on Hall, he bumps off one. Ormeroyd eventually gets his man eight metres out, last one. They're screaming for it on the right, but they're going down the short side. Kenny Dow was hit, he goes to the ground, and that will be the turnover. So, Salford this time defend their line well. Well, they, they, they defended the line. I'm not sure they defended it well. It looks like to me that they're hanging on by the skin of the teeth at the minute in this game. They look fatigued, they look busted, and, and yeah, they're hanging on, and they need some big players now. And Ken Seo, you just see the energy's completely gone because he's gone on his own into a wall of red and, and made no metres at all. Just under 12 to go to the break. It is 12 points to nil. No panic yet. They will have an eye on the clock. And a two-score lead can go in the blink of an eye as Sneed is kicking downfield, but it's straight into the arms of Zeno. Well placed, and he will bring it back. So Rover's going to get first tackle inside the Salford 40. Well, that's just as bad as an error. It, it, he might as well have passed him the ball, hadn't he, with that kick? You know, he's got, he's got to find some grass if he's going to kick the ball from his own 20. As we mentioned before, he's the best kicker in the league. It's so unlike Mark Sneed not to find his mark when he kicks that early player. Yeah. Is that not in the right place? Ball turned back inside. Stoughton will carry it. Tackle 25 away, eventually dragged to the ground. Salford trying to slow down, control the rook speed here. Keep Rovers in check if they can. Milnes has it. Options outside him. Hopper check saw the defender coming, and it's another knock on. And again, you have to say that left edge from Salford have raced out, haven't they? Joe Burgess has been good all game. I think he's been good with the ball. He's made a couple of breaks and he's made two telling contributions without where he's put up a check under pressure. How long then before Milne sees that and goes over the top to see well, him misses well, up a well, check that, out? That's what you should be clocking, isn't it? As a, as a half, you're having a look at what Joe Burgess is doing, and if you've clocked that, you're going to start throwing that one over the top. Or, or even just a touch earlier, just saying, I'm going to wait you earlier, give you a chance, bring him in and pass it to your winger. There's a, there's a couple of ways to to disguise that and, and bring him forward, because you would expect Joe, it's been working for him, he'll keep doing the same. Yeah. It is... Potential opening, isn't it, for Rovers? They lead by 12. If you just joined us, Ryan Hall and a debut try for Tangy Zenon for Hall Kingston Rovers. Here's Watkins, better carry from Salford. They've not got their nose through the line too many times. Atkin in at dummy half, gets it away. Well tackled, just short of the halfway line. Atkin will go up the middle, trying to pinch some meters, turns it back for Sidlow. He'll be an ever-willing runner, Adam Sidlow, trying to wrestle the arm free, but it's a good carry. They're inside the 40, not had too many opportunities down this end, Salford. Can they get one here? Sneed has it. Ormond Roy back up the middle, no support on his shoulder, last one. Sneed goes infield, will want the ball off Briley. They're going to kick it high, Burgess will give chase with Lafay. Senior gets up highest, he's tackled inside the 10. And now, this time, can Salford stay penalty-free? Because this is where they've had Rovers last couple of times they've let them out. Well, they've got to, Matt. They've got to stay disciplined here, haven't they? And, and put some pressure on Hulk here. Nine minutes on the clock, isn't it? Yeah, until half-time. Kev's got to work out how he's getting down the pitch side to join Emma. We should have just put him a rope over the edge of the oh, ball. You could have shimmed like down the rope, couldn't you, It's like a fitness test. I'm going to fail this one. I won't be able to speak after. I was impressed that you were both <laughs> breathing quite well when you got up to the gantry. Here, Rovers have it on halfway. Last one. Lytton, who's been busy, gets it away. Milnes will pick his spot. Goes high. Seal waits. No real chasing pressure. Catches it on his 10, and he's tackled... 20 away, a former Rovers favourite, Ken Seo. Not had any running opportunities at all so far today. As now Salford are looking to put some air on the ball, and they've got a penalty for offside. Now, as a player, would they have rather that played uh, out? Let the play unfold for me, yeah, and, and then go back for the penalty. I think the penalty came because they were that worried about the shape. You know, crossbound really. There's so much space, it's a four on two. Salford just starting to tick some sets off and get back into this game. And if they score next and are only six behind, I think they'll be really happy with the, the score, not the performance. And here they are now as Briley tries to break through. 
Dragged down by the collar on his shirt. For some, it's the Salford fans who are not happy. As there's a skip across field, Croft gets it on the short side. Good tackle there on Watkins. Kenny Dow. That's a really good matchup between those two. Here's Ormanroyd carrying up the middle. 35 out when he goes to ground and another yeah, penalty. A, that was a swinging arm by Minchella. Came over the top. Oh, no, he lashed out there, Minchella. And Jack Ormanroy says, if you want a bit. Well, he did miss him. He came over the top and clocked him, and the referee saw it. I think it was a second effort, wasn't it? That was a little bit after the play. There it is, a swinging yeah, it was, arm. Wasn't it? It's this bit there, when they get up here, Ormanroy has a push out, but the Minchella reaction. A bit unnecessary, that. Yeah, two balls just going head to head. No punches thrown, but you're good to see him go back at it in a minute. It'll be a he did clock him, didn't he? He's yeah, not, he, not he, missed, has he? He, he could be lucky uh, not to, to leave the field for at least 10 minutes here because that is direct contact with the head for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think it probably helps Salford, doesn't it, Kev, this breaking play? And it, when it becomes more aggressive, they've got to get into this game. <laughs> he's gone for 10. He is, he's going in the bin, Minchella. Well, is this a turning moment? In this game, Minchella sent to the sim bin. Sean Kenny Dowell is pleading the innocence. Well, Minchella is such a key player for this Rovers side, but he's got that one wrong, Kevin. And with seven minutes left, he's put some pressure on his team. Don't be surprised if these teams go in level or close to it now. You know, well, Salford well, I... against 13 men, Cookie Rab, but against 12. Yeah. I think I think deep. Paul Rowley will be delighted at 12 0 here in this game. If they can get to 12 6 or as Kev says, get level, then I think Paul Rowley will be delighted. Well, that's back-to-back -back penalties. And these are the, the, this team is the last team you want to be down to 12 men well, against, Willie isn't Peters it? looks on. He'll be constant. Like, you want to get through this period, won't he? Till half-time. Look, you look at this, though. There was no need, there was no point in this. He's just, it's just a cheap shot. He's a, he's a great player and he's better than that. Wasn't much point that kick to touch either. They only met about five metres, but here goes Sidlow. So, so this is Salford's first genuine attacking opportunity. It's taken 34 minutes. Orman Royd sidesteps past one, tackled nine away. I think the score, you mean? Well, if they do, it's game back on in the cup. Good read down the short side, aggressive defence. Lewis, it was who raced off the line. Set restart though for Salford, so six more tackles to come. They're moving it wide now. Briley into the line. Lafay gets it. Lafay to Burgess. Burgess sidesteps, can't get through. Reaches is about an inch short of the line and an inch short of the touch line as well. Look at that. That's how close he was to going into touch. If he didn't have Lafay's there, he would have been in touch. He would have been. Here's Snee, little step, gets it back for Stone. He's wrestled to the ground. What have Salford got here? The Rovers fans getting noisy. They know their team needs support. Burrow gets the ball away. Here now is Sneed. Gets it to Croft. Short pass off. They went out the back. They had numbers. Tackle made five away. Rovers' first real goal line stand. Can they hang tough here? The Robins. As Croft dummies and takes on the line. That's and he's combined. tackled a metre out. Sneed screaming for it. They're a man down, Rovers. Oh, it's oh, an awful so pass from Burrow. And Rovers survive. What an awful end to that set. Yeah, you see the disappointment on Mark Sneed's face. There's a couple of opportunities, probably three or four. If they go out the back, they score. Now, this one from Chris Ack, he just throws the ball. Spin pass it. His legs, Sid Lowe's legs, he's never going to score that. A terrific defence. Hey, sorry, it was that guy. My apologies, I thought it was Amir Burrow at first. It is Atkin, and it was a poor pass. Really poor, wasn't it? It was at his knees. Yeah, really poor. He gives Sid Lowe no chance anyway, even if he does catch the football. Apologies to Amir, he's on the bench, he's not done anything yeah, he's wrong. Not, he's not out there yet. I expected better from Atkin there. What a it's very unlike Salford. Salford, isn't it, Mark, to, to not pick the right options. Ball goes in the scrum. Here. His hall wrapped up, so time ticking down inside the final five. Big minutes these for 12-man Hulkingston Rovers, but they... Survived their first big test on their own line. Storton's made a good impact off the bench. Another good carry from him and a quick play of the ball. Litton with a no-look pass finds Lynette. 
40 off the Rovers line. They've worked their way downfield. Kennedy looking to offload and finds a good offload as well. Litton gets it to Lewis. Lewis trying to find a gap. Dancing his way forward over halfway. Good set this from Rovers. Now works its way to Mills, who's just going to kick it into touch. That'll take a few seconds off the clock. Good management from Rovers. Yeah, really smart, isn't it? Down to 12 men. He knows that well on Mills and finds the touch line. Takes the sting out of the game. So what will the coach, what will Paul Rowley say? If it stays 12-0, what will he have to say, do you think, to his team Well, I, I, I think he'll want his team to be more disciplined with and without the football. They've given away too many penalties. It's not just the errors that they've made. They've compounded it with penalties and have not really given themselves a chance. One set inside the opposition 20, which is what we've just seen. Yeah. And that's it, isn't it, so far? Another set restart, though, for Salford. Three to go to the break. If they could get one, they would feel yeah, a lot better. I think they need to score, man. Here's Watkins, out the back, now there's a chance. Croft gets to an edge, looks to turn it back inside for Co. Sees off Hall, but good covering defence. Hall eventually gets his man, but that was danger there. Salford inside the 40-metre area. Sneed gets it away. Ball back to Briley, gets it away to Stone. He's got nowhere to go. Briley's not quite been able to inject himself into this game as he would like just yet. Played a key part in that win in Newcastle over Rovers. Here is Briley, kicks it and caught by Zenon, who couldn't have asked for a better opening 38 minutes to his Hulkinson Rovers career. Yeah, he's been sensational, hasn't he? You could see what Ryan Briley's trying to do. He's seen the fullback in the line, the space is in behind. But again, it's very unsolved, like not to execute. Yeah, Lafay was chasing through. And I'm now a penalty. I'm thinking about a drop goal, Mark, me. Think about a, a, a field goal. Well, they've got a tap left. on halfway, and Salford have not backed up, and Mikey Lewis is away, and Mikey Lewis is going to score, no, drag down! Salford switched off, but Rovers are going to surely score in the corner, they will! Huge moment in this cup tie, Caitlin it. looked like he got to the line, Ben Thaler wants to check it, but Ben Thaler agrees, but what a schoolboy error from Salford! Tap penalty, they left Lewis all alone. Oh, that's just poor, isn't it? One look was all it took. Kane Lynette, the experienced back roller, has just given Hall Kingston Rovers an almighty shot in the arm, leading by 12. They were down to 12 with Minchella in the bin. But as we were talking about Rovers hanging on to the break, they extend their lead. 16 points to nil with a kick to come. And Paul Cook, that was schoolboy stuff from Salford. Yeah, it's amateur, isn't it? You know, they just turn the back, Mikey Lewis races downfield and then all okay are had to do is get the ball to the left edge to Lynette, Lynette puts the ball down, 16 nil is everything that okay had is having this game, Salford have been really poor, take nothing away from okay are they've had to execute and they've been clinical when they have done. Lynette was never going to pass up that opportunity and this is a huge kick now. Well I think that changes Paul Rowley's speech at half-time. I think at 12-0 he would have been delighted at 12-0. They've only had one opportunity down the hooky our end of the field. I think he might take the paint off the walls in that dressing room at half-time. Milnes five in from touch. He's two from two. He kicked one from out there when Ryan Hall scored in the fifth minute. This is a massive kick. 18 points to nil. And 40 minutes away from the Challenge Cup semi-finals for Rovers. Again, the crowd will tell us. Here is the kick. It's supposed and it goes through. And Hull Kingston Rovers lead by 18 points to nil. Despite having a man in the Simbin, they extend their lead. 
and they are well worth it. Lewis denied by a last-ditch tackle. And then the ball, a bounce pass. And Lynette has the power and the pace to get over. And we're in the final. Second to the half now. Well, what a first-half performance. All the talk pre-match was about the injuries for Hull Kingston Rovers. But Willie Peters called it. He said, we've got 17 out there that can do the job, and they are doing the job. Hall, Zenon, and Lynette with the tries. All the reaction to come. But look at the joyous Rovers fans here. Big crowd at Sulgo Craven Park. And it's the home fans are happy. There's a bit of soul searching to do for the Salford players at half time. Can they turn this around? It'd be a brave man to say they can at this point. And a break. Hull Kingston Rovers 18, Salford Red Devils. And they've got to play. Uh, and, and they don't change the way that they play, whether they're down 18 0 or winning 18 0, but they've got to be better. He never gives a lot away, Paul Rowley. It's quite relaxed there, but I'm sure inside Kevin will be boiling on. Oh, he'll be boiling, place. but he will know that he's got a good side, and if they can put it together for 40 minutes, you know, we've seen over the last couple of weeks in Super League that. You know, there's been a tail of two halves. He'll be delighted, but he still won't. He'll know that this game is dangerous. Salford are a dangerous side. You know, Salford don't have to score in the first five minutes, but they definitely have to score first. Well, Rovers and the red and white will get us back underway. Brodie Croft gathers the kickoff. Sidlow will bring it forward. But they are still a player down. Remember, Rovers Minchella in the sim bin. He's now a look with Atkin to skip forward. He's racked up. Just outside the 20. And Royd will carry forward to the 30-metre line. He's brought down. And the ball back to Croft. Here's Watkins. Less yeah. shape, more intent, isn't it, in that first set? They've just gone right down the middle of the field. Yeah, running a little bit harder than maybe they did in that first 40 minutes. And sometimes you've just got to run harder and tackle harder. And Salford have come out determined to do that. Last one. They're going to go to Sneed, high kick. Zenon just has a look, sees there's no chasers coming within 10, so he's got time to catch it. He'll bring it, and he's tackled 15 away. And it's a bit of a knocking kick. It's, it's not quite high enough to, to be a contest, and Zenon's already showed he's, he's comfortable under the eyeballs. And just going back to Paul Rowley and what he's probably said, I think they'll be asking Brody Croft to get more involved in this game. We've seen a lot from Sneed, but not much from Croft. Yeah, well... It's uh, in there defending with Watkins and Orman Royd as Senior makes a couple of metres in field. Litton waits. Is it a way to Staunton? He's gone well off the bench, Staunton. This will be the first time I've seen Hulkia kick from inside their own half. They do kick, they will, but they're not inside run their it. own half. They're going to run it. And here they are now down the short side. Now they're going to put the kick across. Now there's pressure on Briley. He did well to take it. And the referee will say he was touched in the air. And now it's Salford who'll get an easy out. Briley actually did pretty well there. But Rovers showing. They've still got a little bit up their sleeve. Well, it's well, Ben. They shouldn't be getting space like that. Again, it's another bad sign for, for Salford that they can get round them and put that dangerous kick in. Well, Mills will be disappointed, though, with the contact. It was soft contact on and Braille to give the penalty away, and it's almost a role reversal now. Salford get the easy out and get an opportunity to put some attacking pressure on. There is Croft, gets it in field, taken forward. Litton with the defensive effort. He was well beaten in the south of France last week. Picked up some big injuries as well, but they've turned up today, ready to go again. And they are just under 40 minutes away from place in the Challenge Cup semi-final. Lafayette is Sneed. Sneed trying to... Again, they had numbers, and again, they didn't pass. Now they come to Croft. Croft with a step. Met by Kennedy, but didn't put him to ground. He gets it away to Sidlow. Sidlow moves it wide. Can Lafayette find a pass? Lafayette will get it wide to Burgess. The scramblers have got there. Opacek gets there. They don't put him to ground, though. Inside the 10, off it. Try! Try. Lafayette scores! Salford do get first points in the second half. They just couldn't put Burgess away on that far side. The Salford fans haven't had much to cheer about so far, but the comeback starts here. Tim Laffey is over, his fourth of the season. Well, Joe Burgess, I think, has been terrific all game. He just busts out of two tackles. Laffey stays with the play, 
gets the try, and, and that is a very, very well taken try from Salford, and backs up what Paul Rowley would have wanted, a big start, lots of energy, and they must score first, and they've done that. This game's wide open once again, and Salford will see that they can claw their way back into this, Mark. I think they're a sensational try, isn't it? Joe Burgess, as, as Kev says, has been sensational all game, and he's probably looked the most likely, hasn't he, to score points. This time he puts it on a plate for his centre partner, Tim Lapice. Very welcome for, for Salford because they certainly needed to score first this second half and have done. And that came from Brodie Croft's running game as well. He got his hands on the ball, he took the line on, he bounced off one. He found Siddler who passed the ball out wide and it's been that left edge for Salford that looks dangerous. I think they'll go back there again and okay, I will need to be stronger if they want to go through to the next round of this cup competition. Mark Sneed, former of Hull FC of course. They'll look to add the extras throw out wide. Seen uh, Ron Mills kick a couple in the first half from a similar spot. Can Sneed do the same? He looks to add the extras from out wide. So Salford have got their first points. Can they add two more here? Sneed, cup winner with Hull FC. Looks up at the target. Sends it on the way. And the cheers will tell you he's missed it. 18 points to four, but well, the kick didn't go over, Kev. First job completed, get the first try. Yeah, but it's almost still on it. He needs to score next because he's missed the kick. And Rowan Mills has been uh, perfect with the boot. You know, it'll take it to four tries if they can convert again. So, massive period now coming up for Salford. I think if they get out to a four score lead, if they get out to more than 18 points, okay. Uh, you would expect that they will go away with this game. You shouldn't lose too many games in big games when you're in front little by more things, than isn't it, Paul? Like the kick that hits the post and goes yeah. over. Fine margins, but games like this often decided by fine margins. But Salford have got back into the contest. They were pretty abject that opening 40 minutes. No one, I don't think, can deny that. Now the ball centre field. Sneed gets oh. it. Oh, the intercept was on. Opacek couldn't take it in. Well, we saw that coming, Opacek saw it coming, and he saw the try line begging, but he grasped it. Well, if he'd have caught it, he scores. If he misses it, Lafay goes straight through. Unfortunately for Opacek, he doesn't quite catch it. That it was like slow motion, wasn't it? The, 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 we're right behind the pass here, aren't well, we? It was it's like telegraph. it was slow motion, wasn't it? It was, it was telegraphed there. And, so that is a, they've got out of jail there, and he knows that that could have been a big turning point in this game. Cella back on, it's 13 against 13. Here's Lafay, the try scorer. Runs at Minchella, the man who spent 10 minutes in the sim bin for that high shot on Ormond Roy. Play the ball now. Looking to go through the hands again, they go short. Numbers on the short side. They have got numbers and they are going to Lafay here. Gets it away. Quick hands. Burgess is away. Cuts in off the wing. Can he find support? No, he can't. Tackle made 30 out. But again, that left edge is proving valuable for Salford. Sneak dummies to kick. Gets it away to Croft. Goes out the back to Briley. Short pass to Cross. Tackle 25 away. Watkins waits at the dummy half, gets it to Brody Croft. Here comes Salford again. Looks like a different team. Ball dumped out the back. Salford gets it. Gets it out wide here. Now he's Lafay. Room in front of Tim Lafay. Lafay can't get the pass. Tackle 10 away. Last one. But Rovers having to do some serious defending. Burgess goes short side. Maybe the wrong option. Now he gets the ball away to Sneed. Sneed needs to find a kick end of the set. Is that played at? No, it wasn't. That's a turnover. And for as good as Joe Burgess has been, that might be his first error going down the short side. Yeah, he, he saw something and he backed himself. But they're looking very, very dangerous. You know, it's another completed set, albeit, you know, a bit of a scruffy end. But it's another completed set and another dangerous-looking set. All right, let's get some uh, reaction from down at pitch side then. Ross Fitt is, is with us. Yeah, I'm with Chris Naninu, assistant uh, from Salford Red Devils. A much better start to the, the second half, isn't it, Chris Nan? What was said at half-time? I can't imagine Paul Rowley was particularly happy. No, nah, nothing too complicated, real simple, just hold the ball, finish in their half and just try and play as much as we can down there. And what went wrong in the first half, do you think? Uh, nothing nothing too much, I think we just, bit of panic, I think the crowd got in, got a bit, uh, played a big part in it and the boys just sort of 
gave too many, too much ball away, especially against a good team. So yeah. Nice one. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Cheers, Ross. Well, another error there from Salford. And Jez Litton again, busy out of dummy half, Paul, yeah, he saw the markers weren't square. Commentator's cast down there, wasn't it, with Ross? As soon as he mentions about being disciplined, Jez Litton jumps out of dummy half and gets the markers not square and gets another penalty for OKR. Yeah. Just made the tackle a yard too soon, didn't he? And now Rovers have it in good ball, what can they do with it? Kennedy will spin, tries to find his front inside the 40. Rovers will feel another try, and they're almost there. Ball back on the angle for Staunton, another good carry from him. Wants a quick play of the ball. They come down this short side, Milnes turns it back underneath to Lynette, one of the three Rovers try scorers, first 40 here now. Quick play of the ball, Minchella now driving forward. Reacquaints himself with Ormond Roy, tackle made five away, but Rovers look potent here. Are they about to get a fourth try? Lewis has it. Turns it back, Lynette sees a gap, Watkins just about closes it. Five out, last one. Litton jumps in at dummy half, Litton they're going for the power play, Stoughton up to the line, he's held up. Held up, and that will be the turnover. Salford had to survive, and they did survive. Yeah, they did survive, and it's took a fair bit of juice out the gas tank there. Oh, whole KR clearly just keep turning the ball at this middle and trying to work over the energy. I think Jez Litton's been really dangerous out of dummy half and he's been probing around the rough all game. It's interesting, no Parcel. Yeah, he's not been off the bench, but maybe that's an indication as to how good Jez Litton is playing. I don't think Willie Peters wants to change him. Yeah, well, Amir Burra is finally on now, he's on the ball now. Now Salford will work it, they get a set restart. This time it's they who catch markers, not square, so they're up to the 40 and beyond it. If Salford do score next, we've very much got a big finishing coming here on via play sports and Burr is quickly out of dummy half wrestles his way over the halfway line takes Stoughton back a couple of meters he's only little isn't he in terms of stature but he's strong although he's going to be told to go back a meter or two by Ben Thaler and will play the ball now there they go forward up the middle Kennedy makes the tackle Partington back out there as well he needs a big second half performance Play the ball with Helliwell. Sneak, sneak now. Short pass, and they're almost through. Great legs tackle there. Really good tackle off a check, but they're busted open now. Lafay going to that left hand side. Good tackle, last one. Need a quick play of the ball, they'll get one here. Croft is going to put the kick high across the field. It's caught by CO, tries to get it away. It hits the whole Kingston Rovers body, and that's going to be deemed. Maybe the ball went forward and it's a turnover. Yeah, not quite on the money, that kick. Just a little bit too short. Kensio got up, couldn't get the ball away. Good defence again by the Rovers. This game's the first time it's got into a bit of a grind, a bit of an arm wrestle. Super catch from Seo, wasn't it? Just, just too far away from the try line, as Kev said. The kick's just not on the money. Yeah. Turnover. Well, there is Matt Parcel into the action, finds King. He scrambles his way to the 40 meter line. Rovers leading by 18 points to four. Parcel out of dummy half. Good run from him. Makes the tackle on Parcel. 40 out. Driven forward by Luckley. So starting front rows back out there, King and Luckley, isn't it? Yeah. Now Milnes is going to float it high. He's going to invite. CO to catch it, he will catch it, he's pecked by a wall of red and white. Lynette, Kenny Dowell and Hall were all right on him. And Salford are penned inside their own ten. They could do with a breakaway here just to get them down the other end of the field at the moment. Have they left themselves too much to do? Burgess now skipping across the field, but he's going backwards. Sopacek's got him. Eventually tackled 11 off his own line. Look at the Salford players here under the pot. They look shot, don't they, at the moment? Lafay will bring it forward. Well, the kicking game from Mills has, has just been contributing to this field position. They put them in the corner and they're asking questions, and without moving the ball, they just can't get well, through. Briley almost got away, and there's going to be a penalty here. And Lewis, oh, hang on, what's going on here? Lewis, is it crosses? 
flared up. He doesn't like what happened in that tackle. And Ben Thalen, not for the first time today, is called into action as tempers start to fray here at Craven Park. Well, Ryan Bradley almost called for the penalty. It's a high shot from Lewis, isn't it? I don't think there's that much in it to respond. I agree, there's not much response. in it. And, and if I'm honest, Sean Kenny Dole's just gone, gone off on a tangent here. He's just raced out the line and put Mikey Lewis under pressure. Just pulls the ball off him, doesn't he? Well, watching me, a burrow, he comes in flying over the top. Almost like Kelvin Skerritt back in the day for Wigan when he flew over the top. Kelvin Skerritt, one for our older viewers there. <laughs> I'd, so much rather, I'd, I'd much rather it be Amir Burrow doing that than Kelvin Skerritt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was a great set, and, and like Paul says, it that was that was not needed by Sean Kenny Dow shooting out the line. And to be fair, that tackle, if he doesn't make that tackle, they break away, don't yeah, they? So Lewis, in the end, will feel that was almost a penalty worth giving away. Not that there'll be any further action, although Burrow's going to get a warning here. Now, is his reaction going to lead to him going in the bin? Ben Thaler's just saying, look, I'll take care of that. Any more of that and you'll be sat down. And what is it? What he's had down here, Burrow, is he's, he's had a little set to with Sean Kenny Dowell earlier, and then he's run and jumped over the top there. They, they can ill afford to go down to, to 12 themselves here, Salford. They need to... They probably need this, though, this yeah. energy. They pro I, I know what you're saying, and he can't step over the line, but they need some energy, some aggression, and he's brought that on in bucket loads. Doesn't find out. I said he uh, dropped that pass in the first half. He might come and have a go at me as well. <laughs> You'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Stood behind you two. Here it is for an hour. Oh, oh it's forward. They get away with that, Salford. He's right in line with that. That was at least a yard forward. Salford, maybe they'll feel they're starting to get a couple of calls going their way. Here now is Croft. Croft weaves his way forward, gets the ball away. Briley was tackled just as he got it. Minchella, big tackle. 20 off the line, but Salford is starting to see more ball in the right ends of the field now. Short pass to Dupree. Oh, he's oh. tipped, that's a penalty. And, and Luckley could, could be going in. That's a penalty, yeah. and that was a dangerous tackle. Luckley, Hopefully, Luckley as Dupree has stayed down. Just tips his leg, doesn't he? He does. Luckily, he's, not land he's landed on his shoulder and that. I think he'll go for 10 me. where Salford Luckily. are playing in this half as well. You'd expect them to, if he does go, you'd expect them to capitalise and score some points, but this is a big moment. Yeah. I mean, even though he was so close to the ground, it, you know, there's no big fall there, but he's still landing. There's a lot of weight going through that part of his body. And the referee is only going to give a penalty here. Same because he landed on his back, isn't he? It's well, they're 12 away, Salford. They trail by 14 points. They need to find three tries. Now they're going short, almost breaking the line there. It was Luckley who made the tackle. They're five away, Salford. Nervy times for the Robins. Big nerves now. They're over the line, but I don't think they've got it down. Great defence, King involved. Rovers almost busted up the middle there. Great play from Burrow, wasn't it? Out dummy half. Just his disguise on his pass, drew in the Rovers first defender, and Partington almost scores. Here now is Snee, gets it away to Croft. Croft out the back to Briley, space running out, and Briley strings up and gets clattered for his time. They don't have to score here, there's still 25 minutes remaining, but time is running away from Salford at the moment as Snee gets it, gets the ball away, but. Milnes makes a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. That was a little bit flat, that, from Salford. Not real any zip in their passing. And they're 12 metres out when they'll play the ball, and that's a knock-on. Well, that, that whole passage of play there was probably Salford in the first half. Static, wasn't it? It was almost like he stood still, and Milnes makes the read and a one-on-one -on -one tackle on Stone. He's got to take more care than that, hasn't he, when he's playing the football? Well, we praise the combination of the, the spine for Salford, and at the minute, Matt, Mark Sneed and Ryan Brealy are just having a, a conversation. I think he wanted his fullback round there. He didn't go, like I say, it was a bit of a static ball which resulted in a turnover and things just aren't clicking. Well, they got the first points, Salford second half, but they've not been able to build on it. 
As Ryan Hall looking to break out of his own 20, don't forget, across the city this afternoon, Hall take on St. Helens, and then tomorrow the holders Wigan take on Warrington, and we've got the final quarter-final on via play sports. Kicks off at 5 o'clock tomorrow, York take on the Lee Leopards. Who will make it through. Ah, Hulkingston Rovers going to be the first side to put their name in the hat for the final four. Looks that way at the moment. Have Salford given themselves too much to do? Luckily drives forward, he's up to halfway, last one. Parcel in at dummy half. Gets it away here. Lewis is going to go high. This is, well, this is going out on the full. Well, that's an absolute shocker. It's not, that's not just out, is it? That's over the advertising board. And I think he's just cleaned out some, some poor woman in the crowd. Signs that Rovers are just falling off the high standards they set first half, Kevin Brown. Yeah, the pressure just seems to be... Uh, you know, they're not responding to it the best. And at the minute, Salford just look like they're, they're about to score next. And you know, the, the amount of pressure they've had, when they get it right, we've already seen how dangerous they are. Yeah, well, Lafay certainly looks the go-to man at the moment, doesn't he? Off to edge, Briley. That left edge of Salford's is by far the most dangerous. Can they get going the other way? King, another high tackle, 30 out. It's like Kulkiara trying to limp over the line, isn't it? As yeah. opposed to trying to win the game and put it to bed. It's like they're trying to hang on. And, and you do that sometimes. I, I've, I've been in this situation myself, and you're almost playing not to lose the game when you get in front, and that's a really dangerous thing to do against such a... A classy outfit like Salford. But while it's three scores, that they've got a comfort blanket. If it all of a sudden goes down to two, it's a different game, isn't it? Completely. There's still time. 22 minutes remaining here. I always felt this was going to be a close one. Bora gets it away. Ten metres out now. They want a quick play of the ball. And they get Croft. Find Sneed. Short pass. Taken in the contact. Did well to hang on to it. And we'll have to jump in at dummy half here, gets it away to Sneed, stabs a kick through the line, Lewis is there, fumbled it, but it eventually managed to kick it dead, it wasn't convincing, but it got the job done in the end, Salford should get another set. Building pressure out, it's a smart kick from Sneed, isn't it? Lewis has to shuffle the ball dead, but the, the building pressure, Salford. This is more like the Salford we expected in the first yeah. half, we didn't expect them to come out and perform like they did in the first half again, and they're getting back to the best. And this is a dangerous period now for KR. If they can hold out here, you know, this is a massive telling point in the game. Well, you and I were here a few weeks ago in the Super yeah. League when Wigan scored two tries in the last five minutes to yeah. take the game to Golden Point. So Rovers have got a little bit of recent history of giving away good leads at the end of games. Here now is Watkins inside the 20, finds his front. Can he get a quick play of the ball? He will. Borough gets it away to Sneed. Now there's some bodies in motion there. Four on three out the back. Nice Will they take the tackle five away? No penalty this time. Told to get to their feet. Borough gets it away to Croft. Croft stabs the kick through. It's a poor kick. It was a poor kick, and Kenny Dow will bring it away. And Salford are just starting to show signs, and they're running out of patience. And now they've given away a penalty. And I'm wondering if Salford's race might already be run here. No, I don't think so. I think. Yeah, the frustration of Mark Sneed. I thought he got copped himself. Then the poor kick, and, and Mark Sneed can't help but whack him in the head. And it's a penalty, and I think it's a let-off. But I think they'll be back. I don't think this is game over two yet. I, I, I really believe that this is going to go close to the wire. Kick for touch towards the far side. Gets Rovers just short of the halfway line. 18-4, Ryan Hall, Tangy Zenon, and Kane Lynette with the three tries. In that first half that gave Rovers an 18 points to nil half-time advantage. Tim Lafay won back early on for the Red Devils, but nothing since then. And we go towards the final quarter of this Challenge Cup quarter-final tie. And it's the Robins in the ascendancy. Milnes now takes on the line, tackled 30 away. One more try might do it for Rovers. Parcel finds Minchella, who finds King, bumps off one, goes again. 20 metres away. Parcel has got Lewis to his left, but he's going centre field with Minchella, who finds Mills, who finds a kick in behind Burgess. Burgess catches it on the full mix. Well, it's a penalty here. I can take two here. Minchella yeah. taken off the ball in front of the post. Sure. Let's have a look at this one again. Minchella is down. Ben Thaler had no problems with this at all. Watching it for me. 
Well, they just caught the ball in goal. He didn't get out. Minchello has taken off the ball. I'm not sure I've taken the two here, Cooker. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's 14. Just keep rolling it forward. And the longer they spend down this end of the field, the better it is for them, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure 14 to 16 changes much. And if they can score, well, that changes everything. Yeah, the try, you feel, wraps this up. Trying to go, certainly does. Yeah. Parcel waits inside the final quarter. They're 15 away, luckily, takes the first carry. Oh, he's offloaded it, he's offloaded it, went backwards, Parcel picks it up, that was risky, wasn't it, on the first tackle? Yeah, his offloads at the minute, though, they've been paying off. They have, they're five away, Minchella, short pass to King, evades the first one, King going for the line, he's over the line, but he couldn't oh, get it down. Wow. He was pushed back in the field of play, inches away, so King. Close. Scored at the Magic weekend against Salford, nearly had another one. She takes a step back, plays the ball. Mill steps away from the tackle. Kick through for Kenny Dow. That will win it for Rovers. Sean Kenny Dow scores. Rovers celebrate. Mills with a kick. They want to check it, Ben Thaler, but he thinks it's a try on the field. Is there any reason this can't be awarded? Let's find out. Okay. Two, the live decision is a try, so we're just confirming he is on side from the kick, please. So if we can pause the ball on the foot. Yeah, might need something wider than that, please. Yeah, so if we can go ball on foot, just confirm he is on side. So ball on foot, pause it. Yep, we're all OK, he's on side from that point. I'm happy to go to the ground in now, please. Confirming he is on side. We can just stop on the grounding. Yeah, he's on side there. I'm happy with that. We can just pause it on the grounding for me, please. Thank you. Made my decision. Well, Sean Kenny Dahl came into this game knowing that this might be his final ever challenge cup tie. Retiring at the end of the season. But that try means he'll get at least one more goal. There's a try about to be awarded here. And listen to this place when the try sign goes up. Rovers nearly there to the semi-finals now. They turn down the two, they went for the try, and they get the try. Yeah, before the game, there was a lot of talk about who wasn't playing. Well, Rowan Mills has come into this team. I think he was one of them individuals, probably knocking on Willie Peters' door and wanting to play. And he stood up today, he's performed you know, he's been right up there with the best players for all KR. He contributed massively there. We saw the line shoot up. We mentioned before about the aggressive defence, and he's chose to kick the ball behind, and it was a great bit of play from Sean Kenny Dowell to catch that ball and beat the full-back to score the try. Mills will look to add the extras here that will open up a 20-point advantage with just 18 minutes remaining. And there were Salford bodies fell to the floor when that try was scored. And now the kick is good. And I just go back, Kev, I called it when it happened at the other end. That kick from Croft, a nothing kick, summed up the Salford well, for, day. For me, it was like Salford of the first half, wasn't it? They just didn't execute the skill. And, and off the back of it, they gave a penalty away, a sneak high shot on Kenny Dowell. And, and then another penalty. Then another penalty before the try, yeah. Ron Mills has been brilliant, hasn't he? He's left foot and a real, real pivotal player in this performance. Well, they haven't gone short here. That's a surprise as well, isn't it? Lewis juggles, catches it, tackle made. I think there's probably one last throw of the dice for, for uh, Paul Rowley in his side. I think he probably put Chris Atkin on in the middle of the field. Play with wit, we've seen that work before. I think it, I don't think it'll be long before he changes that mentality. But we've already seen how sloppy they've been with the ball. You can't just switch it on. No. It's 18 minutes or so of hard craft here for Hull Kingston Rovers. One-time winners of this famous competition. They're going to be 80 minutes away from another trip back to Wembley. It's Parcel out of dummy half. It's thrown to the ground. Last one. Can they complete the set? Milnes will thump it in behind CO. Backtracks will catch it on the full ten off his own line. The Rovers chase a decent one. And they've got him inside the 20. He'll make the couple of metres over the 20 metre line but Salford now need to go for it 
and they are going to look to spin it wide. But the, you know, if we're brutally honest, they haven't been good enough today, have they? No, they've been poor. They, they deserve to be where they are on the scoreboard, and OKR have been fantastic. So unless something drastic changes, you know, the, the game is in the bag for OKR. Just a, a bit of a problem here for Sam Luck. They've just gone down at the uh, bottom of your screen there. The, Referee's just stopped yeah, play. Looks he, like he a head knock. Head knock, doesn't he? In the, in the last collision, it takes his time getting back into the defensive line. Ben Taylor is feeling his jaw. Yeah. Ben Taylor really good today, reckon. aren't they? So collision, wasn't it? Just yeah. Go off. Head. Probably this day, but it will be just over 15 minutes remaining. He'll make his way off. Rovers will be hoping that's nothing too serious. They picked up some shocking injuries in the last three or four weeks. Well, Yusuf Aiden is into the action, the former Wakefield youngster. Sneed now has it centre field, gets it away to Croft, short to Watkins. Tackle made 30 out from the Salford line. Rover gets it away. Dupree gets the bumpers up on Parcel. Marcel does his job, makes the tackle, put it to Croft. Croft now turns it back underneath, here's Cross. Cross skips up towards the halfway line, last one. They're going to go left, are they going to run it? Burra gets it away here to Sneed. Sneed gets it wide to Burgess. Burgess dribbles a kick down the touchline, but Zenon is there. And Zenon goes to ground. He's not had much to do second half, Tangy Zenon, but I'm sure Willie Peters will be full of praise for him at the end of this one. He's been outstanding, the young Catalan Dragons loanee. Yeah, he showed what he could do with the ball in the first half to score and create chances. I think he's what he can do, showing what he can do in defence now. He's in the right areas a lot of the time and just making it look really composed at the back for KR. So, the Rovers fans, we're thinking of the semi-finals now for sure. I think what's happened first half, Kevin, this game means Salford have got no energy to get back in this game now. I completely agree. He spent too much time defending. Too many uncompleted sets. And see how every time he's seen the ball has been 10 metres off his own line, hasn't it? They can do that another five or six times, and this game's won, isn't it? I think Rowan Mills has just took that responsibility that Jordan Abdul normally does on the kicking game and, and perfected it and put him in the corner time and time again. Now a knock on. Salford, no, it's over. Look at the reaction from the Robins. Sean Kenny Dow leading the celebrations. They'll get another chance here from the scrum, 10 metres out. But Rovers know they're nearly there. They came into this as underdogs on home soil. But they've made a mockery of the odds today for sure. Fully deserved their lead. And the only question remaining in this one is how many they win by. Miserable day for Salford. Haven't turned up, their eyes will focus on a potential grand final return in October. But for Rovers, here's Zenon, their Wembley dreams are still alive, five metres out from the line. Is there going to be a late flourish from Rovers? Are they going to end it in style? Milne short to Lynette, Lynette powers his way to the line. Five metres away, inside five now. Parcel working short side, dummies, wrapped up, good defensive read. It was all over him there. Tackle made as Lewis gets his hands on the ball. He'll loop the pass to Milnes. Milnes skips across Minchella, finds Zenon, big miss out pass, finds Senior. Senior does well to catch it. Tackle 15 away. Overs in no rush, they don't need to force anything here. This is just about running time off the clock. 10 away, last one, Parcel waits at dummy half, they're going to that right-hand side, Milnes with a kick again, causing problems, try! Hole kicks the Rovers, wrap it up, referee will want to check it again, but it again was a Milnes kick, they're just going to check for onside, offside, let's find out. OK, tackle five, Labis is to try, so if it comes from a kick, so it can just pause the ball on the foot, please, confirming he is onside from the kick chase. So ball on foot, all on side to the right, I'm happy to play on. 
So just on the ground in, please. All on side. So Burgess fumbles that. If you can just pause it for me. Burgess doesn't ground the ball, he knocks on. So we can just pause on the grounding, please. We'll finish on that. So and the ball is grounded. Thank you. I made my decision. Dean Hadley was the only member of the Rovers starting 13 without a try this season. Well, he's got one now. And it's a try that wraps this one up for sure. All Kingston Rovers now into the semi-finals of the Challenge Cup. They lead by 28 points to four once again. Ron Mills. Yeah, this time with his right foot, wasn't it? His, his all left foot, and this time he puts it on his right foot, and Joe Burgess can't handle it. Doesn't ground the ball, and Dean Adley takes full advantage for the try, but a bit sensational, Ron Mills, hasn't he? Yeah, his game management and composure. Mikey Lewis wanted to kick the, the player before, and he just said, let's calm down here, and he swung onto the right side, he brought the defence up and put a beautiful way to kick in. Joe Burgess couldn't deal with it. But Rowan Mills has been at the heart of everything, not just, you know, the sensational attacking blur, but the composure to put him in corners, you know, and ultimately, Dion Cross drops the ball in the corner from that pressure that he's producing, and then he's putting the kicks in, and also kicking the goals, which has been hugely important too. Mills then, looking to add the extras, so he's hit the post, that's one he would have fancied. But he uh, proves that he's human, but Dean Hadley's try. Reward for a hard-working performance from the back rower. Been too good the home team today, simple as that. Salford haven't been good, but Wilkinson Rovers have been clinical. Fully deserve the lead. Sign they will go short, but it's regathered and then gets cladded for his trouble, Dean Hadley, but he held on to it. And that's all he had to do. Tim Lafayette has probably been Salford's best player. But a frustrating day for the Red Devils. We mentioned that they are more and more involved in these big games. And normally they turn up and give a great account of themselves. They haven't quite done that today. And Paul Rowley will be disappointed, as will the players, as they make their way home. Well, just the frozen, haven't they, Salford? The, under the bright lights and in a big game, they've just froze. They have. Here's King. And they haven't done yet, have they, Rovers? Last one. Ten minutes remaining. Long old ten minutes for Salford. Lytton is going to float the kick up high. Ken Seo again. Sees Kenny Dow coming and the tackle made, and again Ken Seo gets it. Ten off his own line. Doesn't seem to matter who's kicking it at the minute. No, the plan is the plan, and it's to kick it in that corner and get shoulder to shoulder, and then expect the shift on play three, and nothing's changed in this set. But you much, you can trace place. it back, Mark, can't you? This, the start of this game, it, it was so poor, you know, and it's just continued in that fashion. Paul Cook and I cover a lot of games, and you always say, Cookie, the first set gives you an indication. Salford coughed it up, didn't they, on their very first yep. set, and that was really the start of the end, wasn't it? Uh, and, and you train all week, and you know the plan all week, and when you don't execute that plan in the first few sets, it puts you right behind the eight ball. It's a decent kick from Snead, but it'll stay in the field of play, picked up by Luis Senior. Driven back 15 off his own line. All brought forward here by Rovers. How much praise do we have to give Willie Peters for this? Put what together the, a team. Well, what, what he has said, Mark, is he, he's not bothered about who's not out there, is he? He's more concentrating on, on who is out there and what influence them players can have. I think he deserves a, a huge amount of credit for the way that he's gone about not talking about the injuries, if you like. And I guess. The sad thing for a Rovers perspective, those injuries are quite long-term now, so it's yeah. not like they're going to be back in a couple of weeks, so he needs to get a tune out of this team, and he's got one today, hasn't he? I think one of the first jobs that they'll be doing Monday morning is, is ringing up Catalans and trying to extend the man with the ball now, his, his loan deal, because you know, Walker's uh, his cup tied and Lachlan Coote's struggling with some concussion issues, so they'll be trying to keep this player, because I think he's been fantastic today, Zenon. Yes, here's Lafayette will bring it forward, it's the pass away. 
Too many of the Salford stars haven't shone today. Borough gets it away to Watkins, who's tried hard but in vain. They didn't respect the ball enough first half, Salford, and they were made to pay. You just wonder that try for Kane Lynette on half time, a, a real game changer. Salford did come out and score first, second half through Lafay, but they've offered not too much since then. And the Rovers have had them at arm's length. There's a little kick through, but. Leave on that, Mark. That's indicative of the day, isn't it? It's not a kick, really, is it? No one knew it was coming. No, Brody, Brody Cross has been as quiet as I've seen him in the Salford shirt. He's been. You know, one of the best players consistently for over 18 months in this uh, Salford side. But today, he's, you know, for his standards, he's been poor. His kicking game's been off, and he's not been involved nowhere near as much as we used to see. I think OK, I've been brilliant. It's as simple as that, isn't it? And you, know, you don't get out to the scoreline that they're at now by accident. They've, they've been sensational. Still some very big names left in the competition. Tomorrow we'll find out. Oh, the lowest ranked team, York, get on. They take on Lee Leopards tomorrow. Lee will have eyes on the semi final, but they've got to turn up and get the job done. We'll find out if they can do it tomorrow on Via Play Sports. Five o'clock kickoff for that one. Ball across to Burgess, but he's got nowhere to go. We'll have to cut back in, and he runs back where it came from. Parcel again will make the tackle. And there's plenty of teammates there to drive Burgess back as well. It's just not worked today. The shifting in yardage, they've expected it. There's been no variety. They've just gone after him on the edges. And often we've seen Joe Burgess drove back. And then off the back of that, the middle, they all have to move back and get and get a, a carry themselves, which is a really tough one off a loss. It is. Here's Watkins. Ball towards the 30 metre line. Salford have it. Getting more desperate. Bunyawa gets it away. Stone moves it wide to Lafay. Lafay will straighten things up. He cuts back across the middle. Can he find the ball out to this near side? No, great tackle, Minchella. Tyler Dupree getting in at hooker now. And when things are not going your way, you know, this is the type of look it, you know, that you don't want your front rower scooting from dummy out. Here that Sam Luckley has passed his head injury assessment, so that's good news for Rovers, more with a view to next week than this week. Now the ball working wide to Briley. Briley over the halfway line, but another one that we've not seen enough of for Salford this week. Now the ball lost. Wow. And that, another insult to injury. Hunyawa. Yeah, Very so okay, moving forward. Well, you go back. Hunyawa had an error in that first half. Didn't he drop the ball when Lafay found it with an offload? He's been poor today, and he, and he can't have any complaints though. He's arguing at the referee. It's probably, you know, through frustration. But he's just dropped the ball, goal in contact. You know, he, he'll be wanting to forget this game, but I'm sure Paul Rowley will be showing some uh, review footage tomorrow. That he won't be happy with. So the ball going into the scrum will switch his first tackle and we get the guy's thoughts on our Fred Challenge Cup Fireplay Sports player of the match. Who are you going for, boys? Well, it was going to have to be a half back with me, me and Kev up here, but I think, you know, the head and shoulders, the best player on the field, I think we both agree, has been Rohan Milnes today. He's been sensational. Absolutely brilliant performance. He's just got that composure that. You know, they need, and you mentioned balancing, you always have to have balance in the side. And with the X Factor, the Lewis, Lytton, and Zenon, you know, that that balance has been given there by Mills today. His kicking game's been great, and he's he's contributed massively to the, the scoreline that it is. So, Ron Mills is our Via Play Sports player of the match today. We'll hear from him after the game. This is a stoppage in play here. Sort of took a knock. Free it is. Well, Mills announces man of the match, and you mentioned it there, Kevin. I just wonder with the fact that Lewis is expected to provide the X factor, Mills can just guide the ship around, and there's not maybe as much pressure on him to do the fancy stuff, but it's the basic stuff that he's done so well, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and that basic stuff is so important because I think Mikey Lewis had, had fit well in this Salford side where they want to play all the time, they want razzle dazzle like this. Yeah. 
Well, what Sills will do off the back of this now, he'll calm it down, he'll rip him back in, and, and you look, he's already again on the ball and getting back to the middle. The composure by the man's been brilliant. It has. It's been a wonderful Rovers performance. Make no bones. We've been saying about how poor Salford have been, but Rovers have done the job magnificently. Make no bones about that. And they want more points to wrap things up as Mills gets it away to Upper Check. His kick bounces back to Upper Check. Going for the luck, he juggles it and drops it. And he's not the ball on. Well, he's come up with a couple of big defensive tackles off a check, but he just couldn't quite get the finishing touch on this one. And Salford scramble and survive. Never survived the try, but they're not going to survive in the cup. They're going to get knocked out, and it's and it's the worst possible way if you perform. You know, when you get knocked out, you know it's hard to take. But if you don't leave everything out on that field, that's when you really question yourself. 28 points to four. And it's a pretty indicative score of what we've seen, isn't it? It's been a one-sided tussle. There was that moment of hope, second half for Salford. Other than that, not much. As Co finally gets a break, can he produce something here? Zenon gets enough of him, and the fullback brings him down. And the tackle completed. They want to make sure they don't concede late on here. Sneed stabs a kick over the top for Burgess, gets the bounce, and Salford might just have the last word. Burgess over down that left hand side, lovely kick over the top, and it's consolation, little consolation for Salford, but a nice try. 28 points to eight. Well, I think Joe Burgess's stats today are look terrific. He's, uh, he's obviously on the losing side, but the amount of times he's he's had a half break or you know assisted, and now he's scored a try. I think Lafay and Burgess have probably been the best for Salford today. But unfortunately, they are on the losing side. I think that'll be the most disappointing thing for Paul Rowley. What it is his team are better than this, and they've not they've not turned up today at all. They've frozen, been out skilled, out muscled, out fought. And just like their cup, if they'd have done all that, what you're saying, they've shown how easy it can be to score chances, score points when they get chances. Here's the kick from out wide. So he's not taking any time, and still nails it over. 28 points to 10. Right smile on the face of Mark Sneed. It was a lovely kick that led to the try for Burgess. And as we said, scant consolation with just over a minute left on the clock. I just took some stick off some OK our fans coming up as well at half time. They said, Have you changed your, your thoughts on who's going to win the game? I said, Hang on, I, I, I finally got one right. It's Cookie, <laughs> your old player you want to be having a go at. <laughs> Couldn't find him though, he'd gone a different way. <laughs> That. I, think Kevin, I, I think I Kevin saw my Grass, eyes. Kevin Grass right you the just as he's going downstairs. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? See if we can get the attention on the way down. Oh, I'm going to go back the other way. Don't borrow my pen, you make a sign. <laughs> cookie tip, cookie tip, Salford. And here comes Salford again. We'll have all the reaction to come, don't forget. We'll hear from the player of the match, we'll hear from the coaches as well and get the reactions of Kevin and Cookie after this one. But it's been a good day for the Robins. Ball comes free, and that's going to be. A, I think like it came out. I think I think the, the red and white half of the city are dreaming of a black and white win and, and maybe a semi-final or a final. Really? Against the really? nearest. Really? Dreaming that okay, are we? Are I? Are I actually oh, hoping that St Helens win by oh, 50? May, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'm hoping that whole, whole FC win and, and we get a derby. Who would you be cheering for? I wouldn't be cheering for anybody. Rugby League's the winner, Kev. Here's Sneed, gets it away. Into the last few seconds, the countdown is on. Might not even get another player of the ball here. The Rovers fans came today hoping that their injury hit side could produce a performance to keep them in the cup. They did more than that, they were outstanding from start to finish, once Ryan Hall's try, got Rovers off and running, the debutant Tanky Zenon, he went over after good work up the middle, and despite Minchella's Simbin and Ken Lynette added to the Rovers' lead, 18-0 at the break. Lafay got one back early on second half, but Kenny Dowell and Dean Hadley got the tries that wrapped up the win, I mean that the Salford late try for Joe Burgess was only a consolation, right. Finishes here, Hulkings and Rovers 28, Salford Red Devils 10, let's get...